morning. Good morning, everyone. Let's worship his presence. Let's lift up the name of Jesus today. Lift up your hands to him, lift your heart to him and worship him.
encuentro mi lugar en ti We worship your presence We honor you We lift up your name above all circumstance We love you You are wisdom from above. You are the riches. You are the treasures of heaven. Hallelujah. Love on him. Just love him. Enjoy this moment, you and him. Tell him you love him. honor you. Oh, we worship your presence. sense the presence of the Lord just wooing us. Just worship the beauty of the Lord. Let His tender mercies draw you in. He invites us to His presence. You belong in His presence.
surrender to Him. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. He is the wisdom. his beauty he is beautiful beyond description I'm reminded of that scripture where the sons of Asaph in 2nd Chronicles 20 go before the battle the Bible says that they started to worship the beauty of the Lord and as they were worshiping the beauty of the Lord, the Lord confused the enemy. Magnify his beauty. Santo, 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 tu reinas para siempre. And I know we're, this is in Spanish, but worship is beyond our understanding in words. Just lift your attention to him. He is the most beautiful. Tu reinas para siempre, Señor. I wait on you, singing to you.
You are so beautiful, Lord. Look at what the scripture says. It says, so they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army of the Lord and they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord sent ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated. Your warfare may be real and strong. The situations around you may be fierce. But as you worship the beauty of His holiness, as you gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, He will take care of the solution. He will take care of the issue. He just wants you to lift Him high and love Him. His love never fails. His beauty is everlasting. Worship Him. Papá, 
Worship Him, love Him, adore His name, magnify the beauty of His presence. There's nothing to be confused about, just love the Lord, that's what He wants. He wants lovers of His presence. love him oh we love you we worship you Lord we're here only for you Somos transformados por tu amor Ya no vuelvo atrás Ya no vuelvo atrás Soy transformado por tu amor question just cast it to the side
beyond description one thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his holy temple we worship you Tanto he deseado, yo corro a tu encuentro, me pierdo en tus brazos, y Jesús, imprescindible eres tú, este es el momento, este es el momento que tanto he deseado. Yo corro a tu encuentro, me pierdo en tus brazos, Jesús. Imprescindible eres tú, me quedo aquí amando. Look at what the scripture says. This is Psalm 27. It says as follows, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of the tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my, so my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. 
Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me when you said, Seek my face. My heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O the God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breath breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 27. This is where we're going to dwell in, Psalm 27. And as we're worshiping here, look at verse 4 of 27. Meditate on it. Let this be your prayer to him. Let's worship him. Oh, hallelujah. Delante de todo. No importa lo que pensarán de mí. Glory to your name. You are beautiful beyond description. Stand in all of your presence. Worship him. No importan los títulos. Worship his presence. No hay grandes ni pequeños delante de ti. Lanzamos nuestras coronas a tus pies. Rey de reyes. Digno, digno. Digno, digno, digno Todo orgullo se derrite ante tus ojos de amor Toda rodilla se doblará Y toda lengua cantará Tú eres el único No hay nadie como tú Favoritos, mi corazón clama. Quiero ser íntimo. Yo sé, no hay nadie entre nosotros. Mi corazón te canta. Jesús, yo sé. Que tú no tienes favoritos, corazón clama. Quiero ser íntimo y yo sé no hay nadie entre nosotros. Mi corazón te canta. Escucha la voz de esta generación amado.
digno, digno eres tu nombre, Señor. Exaltado eres tu nombre. Cristo de la gloria. Cristo Jesús. Toda rodilla se doblará y toda lengua cantará que tú eres santo. Los presidentes se inclinarán, los poderosos se postrarán delante de ti, Santo, 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 Santo. Digno, digno, Señor. Nadie puede estar de pie delante de tanta santidad, de tanta hermosura. Nadie puede estar de pie delante de tanta santidad, de tanta hermosura. You are my joy. You are the crown of my salvation. Nadie puede estar de pie delante de tanta santidad. Oh, hallelujah. De tanta hermosura. Jesus, worthy are you, Lord Jesus. We love your eternal presence. We magnify you. to love your eternal presence. We are here to gaze upon your beauty. This is our only desire. You are the lover of our soul. We throw our heart to you. We spill ourselves to your presence. Please. 
estorbarte y no quiero más salir, no quiero más salir, ya elegí, tú eres la mejor parte, no te vayas de aquí. de pie delante de tanta santidad de tanta hermosura nadie puede estar de pie delante de tanta santidad de tanta hermosura Es 
mucho Pero es todo tuyo Mi corazón Suspira por ti Sé que no es mucho Pero es todo tuyo Mi corazón Suspira por ti Sé que no es mucho Pero es todo tuyo Mi corazón está latiendo por ti Mi corazón llama tu nombre Jesús Mi corazón grita tu nombre want to be close to you.
You hide me in the shelter of your wings. You hide us in the secret place. Yeah. Yes. In your presence, we are safe. time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock meditate on that The more you humble yourself, the higher He lifts you to Himself. Come to Him lowly, meek. Humble yourself at the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. Worship Him in the splendor of His majesty. Beautify Him with your praise. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide you in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide you. He shall set you high upon a rock. Come closer. Come closer to his presence. Let go of the layers of self, ego, pride. Let go the things that concern. There's a man watching right now, and I don't want to know who it is. This is between you and Jesus, but you're watching for the first time. And you're a young, you're, you're a man, and there's a, you've been in sexual confusion. And when you were younger, you were violated as a child. And you have been in a state of confusion. But the Lord says you're his catch. Today's the day of your salvation. Even as I said that right now, you knew it was a, you knew it was you. You know I'm talking to you. You're his catch. He catches you today. He brings you to Himself. He will cleanse you with His love and bring healing to your soul.
There's someone else that's watching. And you're waiting for marriage. But it hasn't happened yet. But you're stuck in the hooks of fornication. Today is your day to be set free from that sin. Confess it and allow the cleansing work of the Spirit to touch your soul. He calls you. He draws you to himself. I hear the Father's heart aching for you. He's waiting for you with open arms. And he's cleansing you with the pure water of his word. He's cleansing you with his son, Jesus. Run to me, he says. And I will put new clothes on you, says the Lord. Get up from your shame and grief and I will cause you to rise come 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 and I'm awake I will awaken you all you need is to hold my hand and come to me celebremendo y clebrebeciendo robojoso erebebeciendo robojo Oh, what is he doing? I'm just praying in tongues and interpreting what I'm getting. There is a cleansing work of the Spirit that he's doing. He's removing the trash and the filth. And he's giving you clean clothes. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Spirit knows who you are. It's like his kindness, his peace, his love, his beauty is washing over you. It's the goodness of the Lord cleansing you. He's cleansing you. It's the love of Christ 
Aviva la llama en nuestros corazones. It's the love of the Lord that will release that refreshing and cleansing. It's the love of God that's going to do the work. It's no amount of striving or effort on your part. Let Him love you. It's from the belly He is cleansing you. Hallelujah. shall be lifted above my enemies. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. That's what he's saying. Every moment, every second. I bind the spirit of death coming against an infant that I see in my spirit right now. We rebuke that sickness in Jesus' name. cloud of darkness that parts now. 
in Jesus' name. Love Him. Just worship Him. Worship Him. Even right now, someone's being cleansed. It's like waterfall. Just receive that. Yep. Let it just flow out of your mouth. Rivers of living water. Someone right now is receiving guidance from the Spirit. You've never had that experience before. It's like... He's showing you something. No, that's not just you. That's the Spirit. It comes from His presence. Beautiful presence of God this morning. Gracias, Señor, que tu sangre nos hace inseparables de ti. Gracias, Jesús. Your head shall be lifted above your enemies all around you. Therefore, offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. Sing, sing praises to the Lord. of the Spirit's heart. That he longs to be one with you. He aches for you. The end of goal, the, the, the goal of prayer, and worship and fellowship with Him is oneness. Oneness with Him. one with you, one spirit with you. They that are joined to the Lord are one spirit with the Lord. The end goal of love is oneness. Just in a marriage, a husband and wife, 
the two become one. So those who are married to the Lord are one. It's a great mystery. Sing in the spirit if you can. If you've never done that, just yield. Allow the spirit to fill your mouth. Allow him words that come out of your heart. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Erica Martinez, spirit wants to fill you again and again. I heard it clear my spirit. Lift your hands. Receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit again and again. Torre besiendo roboso torre beje. Yendo roboso torre beje. Be filled again and again and again. Erica Martinez. Mm. I want you to feel like home. siendo If you want a fresh baptism of the Spirit, just worship. Praise Him. He will fill you. Yep, He's filling your cup to the overflow. Yes, 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 yes. Receive. Oh, reveciende libre mi. Receive. It comes from him, not man. Father, fill every person with your spirit, with Come your glory. Come and take your place. Come on, take your place. Come and take your place. 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 I love you, Lord. Righteous place. I love you. We love you. It belongs to you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
This word's going to bless you. This teaching is straight from the Spirit. Fresh bread. Come to your house. Abide in the praise of your people. Come abide in the praises of your people. We don't just want to visit. Come and abide. We don't just want to visit, Lord, on Sundays. We want you to come and abide between us. Isn't, isn't the Lord so powerful? <laughs> isn't he so good? He's so wonderful. He's beautiful beyond description. One glimpse of him is enough to change and transform a soul. One glimpse of his eternal beauty by the Holy Spirit is enough to unravel all of the mess. so worthy you're so true we love your presence we love you you are what you are who we live for Lord you are who we die for daily us Holy Spirit with such a deep love for your presence oh God cause your people to come deeper deeper still in the wonders of your person <laughs> Yeah, there's someone watching right now. You literally took a frying pan, literally just now. You just took it out and you just placed it on the stove. And you're sensing that wooing of the presence of the Lord. He's working something new in you. He's visiting you right now in your kitchen, right now where you're standing. He is wooing you. You know what that means? He's drawing you to himself. He's... He's causing you to see a fresh perspective of his presence. <laughs> he sees you where you are. And I speak to you that this is going to be a season of newness for you. A season of refreshment. A season of refinement for you. Receive that. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm just seeing what I'm just speaking what I'm seeing. Someone just said, I don't know why I'm weeping, but I know the Lord is touching the heart. He is. Praise the Lord. Absolute oneness is what he wants. 
absolute oneness. Your communion with God, your fellowship with the Holy Spirit, is not just so that you can receive a touch. It's not just so that you can feel goosebumps and feel a touch. The, the goal of your beautiful fellowship, your communion with the Holy Spirit is oneness. He wants to be one with you. There's a great mystery that we see in Scripture. And it's this. In Colossians 1.27, it says, Great is this mystery that's been hidden from ages and to generations, but now has been revealed to his saints, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are the tabernacle. You are the house of the glory of God. Within your heart, within you, within your spirit is the Holy Spirit. And he wants to bring you closer to himself. He wants to bring you into deeper fellowship with himself because the goal is absolute union absolute oneness that's what he wants he just doesn't want you to follow him from afar he just doesn't want a a christian that follows him yes we follow him yes we're christians but what he is looking for is communion what he's looking for is union what he's looking for is your heart and his heart becoming one. The Bible says, the spirit and the bride say, come. The scriptures declare, the spirit and the bride say, come. I believe the greatest revelation given to the church in the latter days will be the spirit and the bride say come a bride and the bridegroom two becoming one the church is the body of Messiah the church is not a building it is you and I it is a people who are betrothed to be married to the Lamb of God. And this is what he wants. He wants absolute union. One of my favorite definitions is the definition of communion. Because when I say communion, oftentimes we think of um, like bread and wine or bread and juice. But the definition of communion is the sweet exchange between two hearts and two minds, the sharing of life and thoughts and hearts in a spiritual level. Communion. Communion. Commune. It's, it's to fellowship, to relate with God. And when you commune, you have union. Communion. You become the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. We become that which we behold. It's, a, it's an, an eternal mystery that we don't fully understand. But Paul said in these words, he said, Know you not that the communion in which we partake of, is it not of the communion of the body of Christ? And is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? And then, and then he begins to talk about our oneness. 
the two become one. That's what he's after. It's not just, I want a touch from Jesus. It's not just, I want to feel Jesus. God does not just want a visitation. He wants a habitation. He wants to inhabit you. He wants to dwell in you. You are his home. Most people stay stuck in, I just want an encounter with you. I want you to visit me, or I need a word, or I need you to touch me. And all of those desires are good, but we stay stuck there. He wants to move us beyond that. He wants us to move into oneness with him. He wants us to move into one heart, one mind, one spirit with the Lord. The scripture says, they that are joined to the Lord are one spirit with the Lord. You who are married, you'll understand this. That as you begin to live your life with your spouse, what begins to happen? You start sharing the same thoughts. You start understanding the other. You start you, you start doing something that is so powerful. You know what you start doing? You start knowing what the person is saying before they even say it. They can look at you. Your spouse can give you one look and you know exactly what they're saying. You know exactly what they're feeling. You know exactly what they're thinking. Why? Because of that unity. And that is what God wants with his children. He wants such a closeness with you. He wants such a deep, intimate relationship with you that you become inseparable. You start knowing his thoughts. You start perceiving his perceptions. You start feeling his heart. Scripture says in the Corinthian letters, who can instruct the Lord? Who can know his mind? And then he says, but you have the mind of Christ. You have his mind. The Amplified Classic says, for we have the mind of Christ and we do hold the thoughts and the feelings and the intentions of his heart. You know what your oneness is like? It's kind of like two vessels of water. One is blue water. The other one is clear water. And you pour it into one new vessel and it becomes inseparable. It's now such a liquid that it's one. You can't even separate it. It's the same with your fellowship with the Lord. Your spirit and God's spirit are in your born again spirit. Now, Christ is in you by the Holy Spirit. We have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Well, I don't feel like I have the mind of Christ. Listen, commune with him. Commune with him. Spend time with him. Be with the Lord. Love the Lord. Allow the Lord to fully have you. I remember when I first got married to my wife. And I remember when it first started happening, it was like a month into our marriage, two months in. 
I started to quickly realize like we would think the same thoughts. We would, I would think about something and then she would, she would bring it up what I'm thinking, or she would think about something and I would bring it up or we would pray about something. We're both getting the same thing. And this would happen again and again and again. Why? Because of the unity of that marriage. Why? Because of shared experience together. Because of fellowshipping together. Fellowshipping uh, means to share life. See, I'm going to say this. The Lord wants you to know him and fellowship and experience the Lord beyond your prayer closet. Praying is good. You need to pray. I mean, hello. <laughs> That's what we talk about all the time. But he wants more. It's, it's beyond just your prayer time. He wants you to become aware of his presence all throughout your day. He wants you to become so aware, so in tuned with him that wherever you go, you truly are connected to him. And the reality is that you are connected with him 24-7 you just need to retrain yourself to know that. You need to acknowledge him, become aware of him more and more. Allow the Holy Spirit to make you aware of him more and more as time goes by. It's kind of like this. David said these words. He says, I have set the Lord always continually before me. And that's what we need to do. It reminds me of what Jesus said to the disciples. He said, I am the door. He that comes in and out of me will find pasture. And it's interesting because he says, I am the door. Let, let, let's, let's turn there. Let me, let me find it. I want to give you the exact... I know it's in the... Uh, the book of John. Yeah, John 10, 7. John chapter 10, verse 7. Look at this. This is so beautiful. Okay. Look what it says here. We'll read it in context, okay? But we'll we'll uh, we'll hone in on verse seven. Let's read the whole thing. It says, "Most assuredly, most assuredly." I love that because he's saying, "Be assured of this." Like, most assuredly, I tell you the truth. I say to you, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yes, you know his voice. You know the voice of the shepherd. I don't feel like I do. You do. When he speaks to you, you will recognize it. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. And then he says this. This is where I want to hone in right here. He says, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, be assured. I tell you the truth. I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. What is a door? A door is a gate. A door is a place that opens and closes. A door is a place where you go from one place into another. This is Jesus. Jesus is the divine door. He is the doorway. He is the door. This is why he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the door. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. And look what he says right here. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. 
Have you entered in through the door? Have you entered through the door called Jesus? And will go in and out and find pasture. Now, this is very interesting because he says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, it says as follows. He says, we'll go in and out and find pasture. Isn't it interesting that he doesn't say, I am the door and those who will go in will find pasture. He says, who goes in and out will find pasture. Isn't that interesting? The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I've come, they, they, have, they may have life, and they may have it more abundantly. Now, I want you to see something here. Why does he say this? Why does he say, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out? In and out of what? Pasture. And this is what the abiding life looks like. Yes, it is to go into the presence of Christ. Yes, it is to go into fellowship, intentional time with the Lord. But it is also, the abiding life is also to come out as well, to go in and to go out and find pasture. That means that Jesus is interested in your personal time with the Lord, but he is also interested in you going out to meet the Lord continually throughout your day. You go into the presence of God in prayer, and you come out of this place of prayer to continually meet the Lord outside. It's not just, I'm just going to spend time with God. I feel good. All right. I'm going to turn everything off now and I'm ready to roll. And it's like a check mark that you did throughout your day. I just spent my 20 minutes with Jesus and I'm just going to go out. No, 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 no. You go into him to fellowship with him and you go out of your time and you continually fellowship with him. Some of my moments with the Lord can look like this. I can only give you by, um, I can give you this example so that you understand what I mean here. It's kind of like this, okay? Very similar to this. You go into your time with Jesus. You spend time with Jesus. Spend time with the Lord. You get into the word, you get into prayer, you get into just spending that beautiful time one-on-one -on -one quality time with the Lord. Then when you're done, you go out. It's kind of like putting on cologne. Prayer is like putting on perfume. You anoint yourself with it, spray yourself, right? But it doesn't just stop there. He lingers with you. Why? Because you've applied the presence of the Lord. You've put on the Lord Jesus. And that aroma of his presence, if you're sensitive enough, it'll linger with you. Have you ever put on a, a fragrance? And you go out your day and you, you kind of get a whiff of it because it's on you. But if you're not careful, you can forget that you put it on. And you can grow accustomed to not being aware of that perfume that you put on. It's the same with the Lord. You spend time in his ointment and his perfume and his presence. And as you go out, he lingers with you. You've got to acknowledge his presence as you go out. He just isn't interested in your prayer time. He's also interested in what you do outside of your prayer time. So you go. And you go throughout your day, you meet people and you see an opportunity to meet the Lord through those interactions. You go out to meet the Lord in your workplace. You go out to meet the Lord in your conflicts. 
You go out to meet the Lord everywhere you go. This is what it means to abide with Jesus. You go in and out and find pasture. Look at the life of Jesus. What did he do? He spent much time with his father. He spent much time abiding in the presence of his father. But did he stay in the mountain 24-7? No. He came down out of the mountain and he brought the father to the world. He came out and continually met the father throughout his ministry on earth. This is why Jesus would say things like this. I only do what I see my father do. Where did he get that? He may have gotten it from his prayer time. Or he may have gotten that as he was continuing to meet the father throughout his life. You see? And so this is, he even said this. He says, it's not me who does the works. But it's the spirit of my father that does these things. It is the father within me that does these things. And oftentimes, if we're not careful, we will we will uh, put ourselves between two ends of a spectrum when God has called us to walk in both realms. Look at Jesus. He walked in two realms at once. He was and he is the bridge of heaven and earth. He is the door. He is the ladder in which angels ascended and descended upon the Son of Man. Jesus is the touching point of heaven and earth. Jesus was, when he was on earth, he was the walking temple of Almighty God. Everywhere he went, the temple was the place in which heaven and earth was suspended, where heaven and earth became one. And the scripture says that Christ is in you now. So now, everywhere you go, you become that extension, that tabernacle of God's glory. Why? Because Christ is in you. And so what happens is oftentimes we'll go on one extreme and just make everything about prayer, 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 prayer. And we sit there and we stay there like hermits. But then also he is calling us out to continually meet the Lord. Outside. To go in and out of the door to meet the Lord. Is this scriptural? Absolutely. Matthew 25. He says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, he will take the sheep and the goats and separate them. And he will tell the righteous, well done, enter into the joy of my Father. For when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in jail, you visited me. Then the righteous will cry it out, and cry out and say, when have we ever done these things? And he says, truly, truly, I tell you the truth. Whoever you've done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. You see? So we go out to meet the Lord. What if the conflict that you're having with your spouse or your work or your church is an opportunity to meet the Lord? What if the person that is causing you heartache or seems to be a nuisance is an opportunity to meet the Lord. What if your inconvenience was the Lord himself meeting you? God wants us to fellowship with him, to become so one with him, 
to go in and out and find pasture. This is his desire. He wants us to go out and meet him. Not just in our prayer time, but also as we walk throughout the day. To abide just doesn't mean to lock yourself away. To abide with Christ is to go in and out and find pasture. It is to enter into the door, to commune, to minister to him, to fellowship with him, to engage with him, and also to come out of our times and meet him. I'm a pastor. I'll tell you something. What happens with me often is funny. I'll see someone and they'll they'll approach me and talk with me. And I will see it as an opportunity of the Lord speaking to me. And that's what I believe he wants us to do. Will you give your time? Will you see that person that wants to connect with you or meet with you? Will you allow the Lord to expand your capacity to see him as you walk throughout your day to meet the Lord? There was a man that I'm often reminded of that went to preach the gospel in India. And he started to preach to the Indians that were there, preach at them. And he had no success. This was hundreds of years ago. He had no success. And one day he went back to the Lord and he said, I don't understand this. I don't get this, Lord. You're asking me to preach the gospel to these Indians in India. And no one's getting saved. No one's being impacted. No one's being touched. And the Lord rebuked them. And you know what he said to him? He said, in essence, he said something along these lines. He said, you are coming at them as if I'm not there already. You are coming at them as if you just appeared and I wasn't at work before you even got there. Why don't you allow me to lead you and participate in that which I have already prepared? And so he started shifting his perspective instead of preaching at them. He preached alongside and participated in the grace that God was doing. And he found Christ already at work before he got there. And he found Christ working in the hearts of people. And instead of preaching at them, he started seeing Christ with them. And you know what began to happen? Thousands upon thousands started coming to the Lord. It reminds me very similarly to in the book of Acts, where Paul is in the city of Athens. And he goes and he says, he's walking around and he's greatly vexed in his spirit. And he says, I was here and I was noticing that there, you are very religious for you worship many gods. But then I saw this one altar here that has no form, no shape to it. And it said, to the unknown God. In this unknown God, I declare to you. See, even in Athens, in a place of crazy paganism, Paul found Christ for him to meet there. And the Athenians started coming to Christ. We must learn to meet Christ everywhere we go. This is what it means to abide. 
that waiter, that server is an opportunity to meet Christ. That pastor is an opportunity to meet Christ. That individual that you're having conflicts with is an opportunity to meet Christ. That person who you find to be a nuisance is an opportunity to see Jesus. So to abide with him is to become one with him, both in and out of prayer. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? I hope that makes sense to you. And that just kind of came right to my heart to share with you. I want to close with this. Psalm 27. I want to close with this right here. Psalm 27. And perhaps maybe Monday, if the Spirit wills, we'll look at Psalm 27 more closely. But look at this. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Let's stop there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's your salvation. He's your light. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Is he the strength of your life? When the wicked came up against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Why? Because the Lord is your light and your salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will, will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David had real situations, but David, a man of God who was after the heart of God, had real situations, but his biggest concern was the presence of the Lord. There were people encamped against him. There were foes that wanted him to be destroyed. There were real problems and circumstances in which David had, but his main priority and concern is this, the one thing, this one thing I've desired of the Lord. That will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, and the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. Now, because of the time frame that we have, we don't have enough time to get into this. But here is something that is relatable to what we were, I was just teaching. And it's this right here. David saw the foes and, an oppor- and, the, and the, uh, the foes and the, and the enemies and, and all of these issues as, op- as, an, an, as an opportunity to see God's glory. And that's what we need to do. You may have real concerns. You may have real situations that rise against you. But allow your concern to be his presence. Amen? I can't get into more of it because of the time restraint. And I have to get going. However, I want to let you know real briefly, if you can, please help us. Can you please give this stream a thumbs up? Give it a like. Give it a a like. Please like this stream. If this word 
has bore witness to you and the Lord leads you to share this with a friend, share this. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't had a chance, help us reach 100,000 subscribers. I'm not looking for 100,000 subscribers just for the sake of followers. Something happens on the algorithm and on the analytic side when we, um, when we reach that threshold. And so we want to bring this message of prayer, fellowship with Christ, intimacy with the Lord, the gospel, to the ends of YouTube. Also, if you have it in your heart to donate and to partner with our ministry, you can do so by texting GLORY, G-L-O-R-Y, to the number 801801 if you live in the USA and or Canada, or if um, you can visit our website. Um, also, this is super duper important. I can't stress this enough. Please, 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 it is not too late. It is not too late to, um, to register for our fresh oil in-person event that's taking place November the 17th through the 19th. It is not too late to do that. Register today. Don't delay because what will happen is we're going to have to close registrations very soon. Okay. Now, um, real briefly here, I just pinned our link. This is how you can get involved. If you want to, um, if you want to, uh, get involved if you want to partner with the ministry, if you want to check out our podcast, if you want to, you know, uh, visit our links, the website, I just put all of that on, on the, on the chat. Okay. Now I want to be transparent with you. This event, this physical event that we're doing costs tens of thousands of dollars. We want to continue to do free events free of charge because freely we receive, we freely give also we're in the process of writing another ebook. We want to give it away for free. We're also doing an e-course next year. We want to give it away for free. All of these things cost hundreds and thousands. And so in order for us to continue to be a free blessing to everyone, we are asking all of you to consider partnering with this ministry on a monthly basis. Your one-time donation or your monthly contribution helps us to make all of these things possible. Would you pray about the possibility of paying this ministry forward? We want to be 100% crowdfunded, and we want to be able to do that. We have staff. We, have, we support missions. There's a lot of things that we're doing. Um, behind the scenes. We are supporting several missionaries in Central and South America. We are supporting our local church as well. Um, and we are, we also have staff that helps us continue to make this ministry going. All of the shorts, all of the invitations, all of those things are being handled by my team. And this is what they're doing full time for us. We cannot continue without your faithful monthly partnership. Would you pray about becoming a partner? It's tax deductible. And we are um, just excited about what the Lord wants to do. Amen. So come to the event, November the 17th through the 19th, Friday night. Saturday morning and Saturday night, and then we have Sunday morning service there at the Wyndham Hotel in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Register today, and if you can't make it, let us know, because we need an accurate head count so that we're able to provide all of the seats as necessary. Amen? Praise God. All right, well, God bless you all, and we look forward to seeing you 
on Monday for another stream of fresh oil. Amen. We do apologize that lately we've been streaming at 730. My schedule has been everywhere. And so we thank you for your patience. We will try to get back to um, the normal 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Okay? God bless you all. And we look forward to seeing you Monday in Jesus' name. Blessings to you. Bye-bye.